Welcome. I'm David. I'm Lindsay. And, and this is Desmond's Donders. Hello and welcome to Desmond's Donders. This weekend we are at Scalen in the car park beside the seminary. Hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Glen Levitt. I'm not going to show you that sign, you've seen it before on other videos, but it says it's a dark night area. Not at this time it's not. You mean dark skies? You're right, I meant dark skies. That's the path down to the ponds. I've flown around them today, and so they'll be in the video somewhere. And this low trees and bushes is what surrounds and protects the car park. From the south at least. Welcome. This weekend we're at Scalen and this is the ponds. Place for a seat. Hmm, you're going to see a lot in that seat. The bushes have grown up a lot. It's been a lovely, lovely sunny and warm day, but it's cooling down now and the sun is behind an ominous looking bank of clouds. But the forecast is not for rain until tomorrow. Something's out of whack here. The camera says it's level. The little seat with its cover says it's level. So someone's wrong. <laughs> There's curlew, oyster catchers, song thrushes. We've seen all sorts this weekend, but none are coming to sit while I've got the camera out. From this seat, you used to be able to see over the other pond. That's it, it's just the other side of the bushes. Now I think you can only see them from the drone. <laughs> For much of the 18th century, the college at Scalin in the Braes of Glenlivet was the only place in Scotland where young men were trained to be priests, the so-called Heather Priests. From 1717 to 1799, over a hundred were trained despite numerous attacks by Hanoverian soldiers. The college played a vital role in keeping the traditional Catholic faith alive in Northern Scotland. It was named after the Gallic word for turf shealings, 
Galen, found in the Braes during that period. In 1799, the college was moved to a less remote site, which had large premises and more accommodation near to Inverurie. Following the departure of the priests in 1799, Scalen reverted to a farm. Two steading buildings were built, housing corn threshing mills, which served the Glenlivet farming community. The threshing machines and water wheels are still in place, along with a wealth of historical graffiti telling the story of farming life in the 19th and 20th centuries. A major project to conserve the mill buildings took place in 2019, restoring the water wheel and lade in North Mill and improving visitor access to the site. This was funded through the Tom and Tool and Glenlivet Landscape Partnership with funding from the Heritage Lottery Fund. Alexander Geddes, Scottish theologian and scholar, was among the famous figures who studied at the college. The last permanent resident of the Scalen was Sandy Matheson, who died in late 2005. Sitting here, I got time. It's clear to see from up here the world seems small. We can sit together, it's so beautiful. You and me. Meant to be in the great outdoor, forever free. The Braes of Glenlivet was a major location for illicit stills in the 18th and 19th centuries. 
And if local rumours are true, the practice continues until relatively recently. This remote, sheltered, high pasture land was ideal for moonshining. The first road to the Braes was only laid in the 1960s. The distillery followed in 1972. Braeval has steadily grown in capacity and is now home to six stills, two large wash and four smaller spirit. All with thin necks and upward sloping line arms helping to generate a lighter style with some floral notes. It is rarely seen as a single malt, even independent bottlers scarcely have any. It shares the honour of being the joint highest distillery in Scotland with Dalwini. The site was chosen by Seagram, at that point still in pursuit of the Glenlivet, purportedly because of the quality of its water. Famously, the first mash took place before the roof had been put on the distillery because the chairman was coming from Canada to inspect his new baby. It was one of the first wholly automated distilleries in Scotland and one of the first to contain all the equipment in a single open plan space. Although it sports a Pakoda roof, no malting has ever taken place. It became part of Perno Ricard's portfolio when the firm took over Seagram's Scotch Whiskey Division in 2000. The following year, its new owner mothballed it for six years, but it is now in full production. Originally known as Braes of Glenlivet, it changed its name to Braval to avoid any confusion with its more famous neighbour.
and packing off, packing up to head home. And this came to park in the car park. I'll try and take some shots from different angles. Thank you for watching Desmond's Donners and remember please take nothing but memories and leave nothing but tracks. Please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications and hopefully we'll see you next time.